Everybody, it's Tyler here at Finn Mishwaka checking with 1501 Thrust and a phenomenal robot they feel that I just watched their last match for Note Auto as they go through and a lot of great features as well. Awesome extend out intake. We'll be following the full note, note journey with some cool things going on with programming, some great electrical work as well too. Last year this team won a district event looking for uh, big things here at Mishawaka as well. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Trevor, we got to start talking about the program that's throughout. You have a great four-note auto uh, that we just watched in there, and a lot of other cool things that go into this machine. Talk to me more about it. Yeah. So. For this year, we are using Java programming, and for the auto programming, we are using Path Planner, which allows us to draw paths and put in named commands. So also with that, we have auto aiming, which comes through a limelight three, but the feed comes onto the driver station here with a target that lines us up above the April tag on the speaker and that allows us to position the deck automatically and rotate the drive base correctly. Also, for the intaking sequence, we have sensors that allow us to stop our note in the correct positions as we go through the match and take up pieces. So the first one here, I guess is when we have a piece in it and we won't want to score in the trap, we spit it out until a little bit after this sensor triggers. And that allows us to get the correct position for the trap. This upper one, when we are intaking a piece, we run it until this one triggers and that is when we stop. And then it's right there in the position we need it to be for shooting. So you have a four note auto right now that's been working really effectively. Let's look to the future. What are you what are you aspiring to get to maybe by your next district event? By our next district event, maybe we'll try to add an auto where we are going and getting pieces further on the middle of the field or increasing the number of pieces we get in auto. I'm not sure. We'll see how this weekend turns out to figure out what we want to do with that. And your team's got a lot of cool stuff uh, from laser fab on your robot. So talk to me about what you've been using with Send Cut Send on your robot. Through Send Cut Send, we're able to get these plates right here that we were able to attach to our rotating arm that's keeping the whole frame solid and attached. Then if you come down here, we have this belly pan that we got from Send Cut Send that's holding our electrical and frame to the bumpers. A lot of great stuff in there. Our friends at Suncut Send, by the way, are going to give you a $50 uh, gift certificate to use at suncutsend.com slash fun. You can also get an extra 20% off when you go there. So thanks for showing that. Let's hand it over to Abby, who's going to be talking about your uh, intake on the mechanical side. Abby, this is a wicked intake. Uh, you're watching on the field, a lot of control of the notes as you go to suck them up. So talk to me more about uh, what your intake is and why did you go the route of having that ex uh, extend intake that you have? So we went with the over the bumper intake because we thought it may be a little bit faster. Why don't you suck it up? And, it. and so then it sucks it up and it goes in here and there's a sensor that kind of makes sure that it's in there and it doesn't flop around and it's secure with these belts in place and it, it with these rollers it makes it so that it's really hard to move it around so it's really secure in there and it's all in these chains it's how you move it what are considerations that you have to make with doing an over the bumper intake? I mean, you are coming out pretty far. Do you have any concerns about robots uh, smashing in your intake at all? Yes, we do. We have a lot of concerns about that. We have, whew, that's a lot of concerns. So one thing that we've tried to tell our drive team is to not extend our intake out too soon because by the chute, that is a really tight area over there. And, it, it can very easily get knocked into and get bent out of shape. As we keep moving on in this, uh, a couple other things we want to mention on this is we're going to the shooter here. Carson's going to talk about 
uh, what your shooter is. I love the overall packaging that you have for this robot, Carson. So uh, talk to me about uh, how this all came together and the choice to go with kind of this entire uh, full mechanism that just kind of does everything all at once. So we started out with having our shooter wheels on the sides instead of on the top, but we decided to do a second prototype testing the um, top shooter wheels and turned out they got much better grip and more accuracy when we used them. And so we started with a design that kind of had all the connections in the middle here, but we decided to move to putting them to the outside over here with these safety rails. That way it would connect better and shoot better. We have these on two separate motors. That way one can move at a faster speed than the other, so that way we get some twist on our shooter. And looking at this so well, I saw you score a lot in the speaker, but I didn't see too many amp shots. Can you talk more about how your amp shot works? So our amp shot works by this will lift up and as Trevor's showing, this will lift up and it'll move the no out to here where it can dangle. With this dangling by pushing it into the amp, it will bend down like this and then we can filter it out that will go and score into the amp. And for speaker shooting, your team chose to go with more of a uh, pretty high velocity speaker shot out there. Uh, can you just kind of break down some of your testing that led to wanting to go that route? Um, we noticed that if it was low velocity, it's harder to shoot at from farther away. And since we have a limelight up here by the shooter that allows us to aim towards and auto aim at the um, speaker, that we decided that high velocity would allow us to get better accuracy no matter where we are on the, map, the field. Let's pass it back over to Trey Burris and talk about uh, something that I have not seen very many teams do effectively, and that's the trap on your team, which, uh, you know, we saw the last match do it, very effective. So break down how your trap works and the climber as well, too, as it all packages together. So what we are doing with the trap is we are, before climbing, we bring up the shooter and intake mechanism so that it's positioned so that we can line up the hooks on the chain. The Stabilizer will deploy before we do anything, but then the hooks will first come down and will allow us to reach the amp. Uh, once we get to a certain point on our climb, we put the intake down and then we extend it with the note dangling out like you saw for the amp. So with that, we extend the intake out and bring it up. And, and then after it has been extended, we drop it down and outtake the piece, making it go into the trap. Where was the uh, uh, trap in regards to your priority on scoring? Was that something when you guys looked at the game that you're like, yes, this is something we have to do this year? When we saw the game, we were like, yes, this is required to get the breaking point for the stage. Well, very cool and obviously very effective as well too. Let's start to wrap up on this robot. It's actually talking about some of the great electrical work that's been uh, done on this. So uh, walk me through some of the uh, different areas that you want to cover and why it's so important your team to have a great electrical setup. Alrighty, so this year um, we used the can of war. So in years past, we had a bunch of problems with mixing our red products and the CTR products. So now we separated our can bus into two separate channels. One with CTR, which is our driving sensors and our candle. Um, and then all the other products, which is the red products, um, into a different channel so that way we can, one, um, separate it for the programmers, and two, it doesn't confuse the CAN bus like it did in years past. Um, this way we're using the Canivore instead of our previous light system, which has been working flawlessly so far, has not been any breaks. And I think it's very crucial to label everything. So we label all of our channels with different uh, color shrink wrap which is black, red, and white, um, so that we know which wires go to which. We also label every other product, like our speed controllers and our other wires, so that if it breaks, it's a speedy recovery. Well, Team Thrust, congratulations on a great robot. We can't wait to see how you do here at Finn Mishawaka. So good luck the rest of the way, and at this event, thanks for telling us about your robot. All right, thank you.
Support Fund's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.